I'm really feeling quite enthusiastic about the human race and where we could go to now. It's looking, yeah, looking positive. Well, are you getting the sense in some way we've turned a bit of a corner? The governments, as we've been having them, and the, shall we say, the incompetence of some of our, some of our leaders, <laughs> and some of them are still there, um, because they're not they're not of service to the population or or the environment the population is living in. There is sort of they're in service to themselves. We were going down a, a really steep dive, a really yeah, a really steep angle of, of descent. And that sort of happened after we didn't get this mass ascension in 2012, because people expected a, you know, a, a massive global ascension where we all suddenly become enlightened and suddenly start to see the entities that are here on the on the next level up. But of course, that didn't happen because it's it's essentially it's, it's an individual function. You know, we we evolve individually. So, lots of different individuals who were advertising these different processes and things that were going to happen and, and, and events started to lose credibility in, 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 and a lot of people who were sort of on the on the fence about spirituality or metaphysics sort of fell on the you know the hard physical side so to speak and just debunked it all so we started to you know get complacent about it and a lot of people just dropped out of the the this this thought process and became the yeah you know, became the immersed human being the, you know, the the soul that's immersed in their in their humanity, but now that yeah you know, we've we've started to reject this idea of um, <clears throat> being sheep and accepting that what somebody says is, is right even when it's completely wrong, which has been happening a lot. You know, we're all over the world. I mean, if you look at all of the leaders, they're all guilty of it. There's one or two that that are that sort of are doing better. But in, in essence, they've, they've all sort of been slightly corrupt in their thought process. But now we're moving away from that. And it's and it's there's a there's a there's a global feeling. Well, I'm picking it up that we're starting to flatten out <clears throat> on this descent. You know, we're going to start to pull up. And I, 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 I feel that within the next two years, we'll start to feel a difference again. And I remember the optimism we had in 2011 for 2012. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <clears throat> well, even then, I know there was a a large amount of misinformation around, and Dolores was the one that was answering a lot of questions as to, um, you know, a lot of people thought that it was going to be the end because it was the end of a uh, an age or <clears throat> the Mayan calendar, but <clears throat> really it represented an end uh, to a cycle essentially. Um, <clears throat> but she got a lot of. Uh, questions at least about the coming of the new age and wh whether it was going to be the end of humanity she was always very optimistic as i'm sure you know mm -hmm. because you were you were friends with her and you um fortunate. Spoke at conference this is yeah fortunate and honored to have five years with her yeah definitely um, why don't you tell <clears throat> everyone a, a, a little bit about that relationship and how you met and how that kind of moved into going <laughs> yeah. on to, to to speaking together at her conferences yeah. well <clears throat> what happened is i submitted a book my first book the history of god to a number of different publishing houses and it got rejected you know the, the same old sort of story you send about 20 20 books out and you get 20 books back and i managed to get one the, the first version of the history of god which is a black cover um, published through a self-publishing house, which, which which was quite expensive actually. Which, if I'd have known that um, the Amazon, you know, publishing, Kindle publishing um, opportunity was there, I'd, I'd have used that. But anyway, that's history. <clears throat> so it that became published, and I, I didn't really, I, I'd forgotten totally that I'd sent this my book to Zoe's Ark, and Dolores picked it up. And she said, "This is fantastic. We've got to, we've got to publish this." So, anyway, so <clears throat> I got the, the the phone call on New Year's Eve, two thousand and nine, <laughs> from um, from from Julia Cannon, her daughter, that they'd be interested in publishing it. And um, I then thought, "Oh, great! There's a whole bunch of other stuff here. I've got this could be a prequel." So I very quickly re-edited and re-sort of compiled the rest of the information and set that up as a second book. 
And Dolores said, no, no, we can't do that. It's, <laughs> this has got to go into the book, and, you know, because it's part of your history and part of other things as well. And it sort of linked him with her stuff. And so she spent uh, a good chunk of 2010 while she was on tour. And I, and I actually met her for the first time on tour in the UK in 2012. She was doing a QHHT um, seminar <clears throat> in the Cotswold. And she actually edited it all. She did the final compilation that edited the history wow. of God performance. <laughs> Which is she must have seen something that's 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 nobody else had seen, <laughs> a bit like um, you know J.K. Rowling's um, <laughs> publishers saw what nobody else saw, <laughs> you know, and and and, and not, obviously not nowhere near the same level of popularity as J.K. Rowling's work, but but <clears throat> she obviously saw something in there that uh, that nobody else saw. Well, and, I know um, that she, I know that the information that is shared in the book, uh lines up with a lot of her information i know there's different articulation it's described a little bit differently obviously coming from different sources but essentially it's saying a lot of the same thing well <clears throat> so it concurred it, it concurred her work because her work is from one angle basically secondhand information through channeling as a function of her healing for her hypnosis so she's actually making her clients channel because they're put into hypnosis. So she was just receiving information from her various different clients who ended up being various different channelers. Uh, <clears throat> so she had no way of, con of, of of corroborating what she what she's receiving because, because nobody else was was doing it. But I was picking things up through through pure channeling, through both mediumship based channeling and. Um, um, channeling where you're you're taken over by by the entity so it's not quite automatic writing but it's the same sort of thing you, you just know you've got the just download the information just type it in you know <clears throat> you know getting all the information and she she saw that there was a, a, a you know a, a concurrence there a corroboration between what i was getting and what she was getting with a different angle <clears throat> and what's more it was taking it to a different level so she she saw she saw that I was potentially somebody who could go further than her, and um, she always said that. She I mean she really pushed me, unbelievable. Um, I can see I can I can to... see it. I can yeah. see that she really believed in in what you were doing, and as you yeah. said, really pushed you to get the information yeah. to as wide an audience as possible. Yeah. And we used to have lots of we used to have lots of talks. You know, when we, we we went on tour the first time with her, so I did some lectures in about six different locations around the UK with her when she came across and did the same thing, plus her QHHT work, and it was um, it was fantastic to do. And then the same year, I was invited over to the first uh, transformation conference that I attended, which I think was the seventh or eighth transformation conference that they that they'd held. And and of course they they didn't just invite me they invited a number of different new authors to their that were part of the Ozark Mountain Publishing portfolio, but it seemed that <clears throat> she had a soft spot for me basically because of the the engineering side and the ability to sort of explain it in an engineering way, and it, she 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 always wanted to include me in things including a couple of questions and answer sessions where there was Julia and myself and. And just Dolores on, on on stage. I mean, later we had the whole, you know, we had sessions with the whole group of different authors who were part of the conference. But it was, but it was, it was the energy was fantastic, and I, I really think that she put me to a stage where I got my own inertia. And it, it's 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 not what would you call it a you know I'm not like, like a rising star because the information is specifically difficult and convoluted at times and therefore it's it's those people who are expansive enough to be able to understand it or would be able to later on and you know we we've it's not being a school isn't it you you you, you understand certain concepts certain levels of knowledge it's only when you go later on to university you might even become a sort of doctor or a professor you, you're able to understand lots of different concepts yeah and so we have different teachers at different levels and she saw me as being sort of, sort of standing on her shoulders 
and I I can see other people who could stand on my shoulders as well. You know, we all stand we all stand on the shoulders of giants, and and it doesn't matter how, how many people you get to, or how many people are, are benefit from what you do. If it's one person, then then your work, you know, all that hard work and all those different books and the workshops and le- conferences and lectures and consultations has been worth it. And so and she saw that, um, you know, I mean, I'm. I'll never be able to take her place, and I, and I, and I wouldn't want to because she's provided such um, <clears throat> such a momentous amount of information for people, and was so down to earth as well, logical. Mm. But uh, you know, she she needs even now she needs to be the stepping stone without doubt, and and she's and she's there. I, I think that's great, you know. And I uh, got a message I share it often with people I speak to, is that. Dolores came to lay a foundation and then others like yourself are there to build the structure. Mm. And as you know, with a a physical building, Mm -hmm. when Mm. a building, you know, when they break ground, it's a long process of, of, of going down, particularly if there are a lot of lower levels Mm. and it takes a long time before you see anything. And then eventually what you see is the beginning of that structure and it seems that very quickly that structure goes up. I've seen it with many skyscrapers around the city mm. here, and I'll go back a few months later, and it looks like it half, it's <laughs> half built. It, it surprises you because you've watched the foundations being laid with not a lot showing. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> it's, the, it's the foundations that's, that's so important. I mean, you can see with people who suddenly become aware in some in some way mm-hmm. and they and they do various different things and, and maybe become um, able to act as a consultant for somebody else in a, in a spiritual way of some sort or, the, mm-hmm. or doing readings or or healings mm-hmm. unless they've got the basics and yes. they've had some level of training to be able to hone their skills mm-hmm. they either burn out or they or they go off in an abstract direction which isn't beneficial um, well, but getting that all... balance is so challenging. And I, I think you touched on it earlier, you know, particularly in the spiritual community, some people just burn out and they're out. I was going to ask you, though, when Dolores passed a number of years ago, did it come as a shock to you? Because I spoke to Julia, her daughter, the other day, and, and she said, yeah, mum never spoke about passing on. We all thought she'd be around to at least a hundred, you know, <laughs> ushering in a lot of the information that her book spoke about. When you first heard the news of her passing, what was your reaction? Um, I wasn't surprised. It, it, it was it was a shock. It was a you know it was it was a shock, but I wasn't surprised. That's a bit of a double. It's a bit of a you know <laughs> an opposing thought process, isn't it? And I was uh, so I was I was sort of shocked mildly because I thought, oh, wow, well, that was quick. Because she basically she tripped up and banged her head on the stairs, went into hospital, came out of hospital okay. Then a few days later, she she left. Yeah, uh, which which is sort of a common process that some people have taken. I've noticed. Um, but what? But I wasn't surprised, and and the reason I wasn't surprised because I was starting to feel that she'd done the work, mm. and and that she didn't need to be here anymore because there was other people around, and she'd obviously created a wealth of potential knowledge from all these these, these different authors that she'd, you know, promoted through her through her publishing uh, company, and I felt that yeah. This was the time that, that she chose to go, and um, what I did, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to the funeral um, because I, I, I'm friends with, with all the family members, um, um, apart from the son who, who's a little bit on the sidelines somewhere. <laughs> and um, so I went there with a, there's a few of the people, as a, a Leo Shu from from China, the, the agent, uh, UHHT agent, and my agent over there. Um, there was a Kaga Kutsumoto from, from Japan, who's the QHHE agent in Japan, and and me, and just some fr- friends and relatives. And that was it at the, at, the, at the funeral service. It was unbelievable. 
And I've, and I've, I've decided to go there and, and I've channeled some information about about her and about three of the things that she that she was that she talked about. And one of them was the new earth, and the other one was why did she go so early? What, 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 in comparison to what people thought she would be here for. And I I really felt that in staying longer, her soul felt that she would start to be a natural barrier, subconscious barrier to those others who were going to go beyond her. And so when that happens, it's time to go. Uh, I've never time. heard that said like that before. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you look at um, when we, we, I know that I've got a certain amount of work to do. And then when that's, when that's, when that's done, I'll, I'll move out of, I'll, I'll just concentrate on myself then. I'll concentrate on going back into doing a lot more meditation and, and um, self-development. <clears throat> So, so I'll be out of the way. I'll, I'll no doubt very soon after that I'll be gone as well. Hopefully we get a bit of time before then. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we get some retirements. I don't think we will, but there we go. So it's it's about understanding when your time is finished. And so and so subconsciously her soul knew, you know, you've done the work, it's time to go. And if you look at um, Paramahansa Yogananda as an example, he'd set up a huge organization and he un and he was I think he was uh, 59. It was 1952 when he departed. He was born in 1893, I think. So he was 59. And he created something which didn't need him anymore. Because people were were trained to be able to deliver Kriya Yoga. A lot of them had achieved enlightenment, self-realization. And so they knew what they were trying to teach. <clears throat> because they, they experienced it themselves. So he didn't need to be there. So he went, consciously went. And so that, I feel, is what Dolores did. Um, probably not vocalising it so so obviously, but um, I think that's what happened. She just she just felt that you know, if I stay here any longer, there's going to be a natural ceiling, and that will stop Hmm. The, the, the promotion of other people to, to go. Well, I liked learn, how you learn. said that is that we don't know it consciously. And I don't think she did know it consciously because, you know, I had discussions with Julia, her daughter, and she said, mom had no idea. It was never spoken about. She had no sense of it. In fact, she spoke to her before she passed and it, it seemed like, you know, she was going to be okay. Um, but as you said, which I really like, is she probably knew this subconsciously? She knew when the time was was yeah, ready. Yeah. yeah, and 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 to be honest, this is the mark of a master. <laughs> you know, knowing when to go is the mark of a master, mm. and she was she was certainly a master. You know, if you look at it, I mean, she she was you know just the average person. You know, her and her husband was just the average people, mm. and look what she created. Well, I think that's what surprises, you know, and and I know you're well aware of just how, you know, widespread she is now in all walks of life. Her information is is spreading faster, reaching more people than ever before. But as you said, her presentation is just very simple. Um, she lived a, a quite a simple life. Um, she was a pretty frugal person from what mm. I know about her. Um, but she was like, I think like yourself, really committed to the information, to being connected, to bringing the information mm. and making it available to people. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's, that's the same with all great masters, <laughs> their, their commitment to getting the information across. And again, I mean, I went to one lecture in uh, actually Cardiff, <laughs> not which is ten miles to my east <laughs> right now, and the, the, there was only I think fifteen people there. Julia will be wow. <laughs> only a few people there. It's and, incredible when I think yeah, about yeah, just exactly. how much interest anything of hers gets these days. Yeah. Back then, yeah. you know, because yeah. she was well ahead of her time, time, right? Yeah. This is around 2011, and she and and she said, 
right, let's get let's, let's let's start then. The people who are supposed to be here are here. And that was the and I have the same attitude, you know. If you have one or two people, you still you still do the workshop because they're there for a reason and you're there to to help them understand, to share the knowledge. And so she had this fantastic thought process of, well, you know, we're here. And that's it. Let's mm. get on with it and do it. It's 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 it, it, it share it. And she really felt that the people who were supposed to be there would be there, yeah. whether it was 300, 3,000, or, you know, or 13. You know, she she didn't, it didn't phase her at all. It was, um, in fact, I remember, I remember her saying that she, <laughs> she, she used to go to conferences, some of the UFO conferences, when she was first starting out, and she'd and she'd she'd buy a um, a ta- you know you, you rent a table in these conferences where you put your stuff on, you your, your, your books and your you know your ideas and that sort of stuff, and she said I'd, I'd sit there for a, for a weekend, and maybe one or two people would walk up to me and talk to me, and that would be it. Wow. And you think just wow. and she said I'd, I'd be thinking to myself. <laughs> All this money is going down the hole. Nothing's happening because <laughs> it's just because there's nothing there. And then all of a sudden, she started to get lots more readers, and people got you know become aware of it, and they shared the information. And then she became really, really popular, which is fantastic. It's a great, just as you're saying that. I mean, it, it's a great story, isn't it? Because so many of us face that in our own lives. You know, we 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 do something, we believe. We're, we're adding value. We believe what we're supposed to be doing, but we don't get the recognition. Maybe we don't get the follows or the people reading our books, but it's a great story, isn't it? To inspire people. Cause she spent 45 years. And yeah. as you know, <laughs> she, she spent a large part of her life caring for her husband, John, who had had an accident um, on the way to work yeah, one day. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, he was in the army. He, he was um, he was in one of these um, vehicles where you sit right at the front, almost like an, an all-terrain vehicle that, that was a heavy-duty all-terrain vehicle. And uh, another <clears throat> the squad he basically drove straight into him. Yeah, and having to, I mean, I know I know we've spoke this uh, about this before with people, you know, having a carer is a huge responsibility and essentially Dolores was a carer for her husband for many, 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 many years until he passed. Uh, And then at that stage, I think she was ready to go out into the world and share this information. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, John was always there. He, he, he supported her work, but they, they they did the hypnosis together. They started. Yeah. And I mean, (laughs) He even built a house with her. I mean, a, you know, a, a substantial property wow. um, in the Ozark sort of in the Ozark mountain area, and I mean, he was a really resourceful individual. <laughs> yeah, okay, he, he was in a wheelchair, but boy, could he do some work? You know, you could just see that John did this. Wow, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and so you can so you understand the motivation between them, and they sort of must have bounced off each other in terms of, you know motivating each other and um and directing each other and, and and obviously there's more care coming from Dolores side to John than, than, than the way around but you could see that John was going to say to to Dolores at some point you know you've got to continue this work because it's important and that would have been a, a lifetime of motivation and in some respects that's that's the same with Anne with me it's it's um I mean Anne loved this sort of work her father was was a was a scientist and was also a, a metaphysician. Uh, he, he wrote three books, and so the whole ethos between us was the, was pretty much the same. And and Anne loved loved being in in, in and around Dolores' uh, energy. It was fantastic. Mm. Well, I've seen a video actually. I I think it's of one of the conferences, and and is up on stage. I think with you before you're about to give a keynote at that uh, at that conference. It, it, it's remarkable, isn't it? The similarities between, say, this story and and your own. Mm. Does that sort of surprise you when you see those sort of kind of synchronicities, if you like, between <clears throat> say, your I, I life a, and and hers? Yeah, I think it's a common 
synchronicity with a lot of people, not just myself and, and there always. There's a lot of, <clears throat> for instance, um, there is a, a sort of a, a similarity with John and myself because I was in a car accident uh, in 1991 that should have killed me. <laughs> so, and 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 you sort of and, and you and there's a lot of metaphysical things happening at the point at which the the accident happened. It was quite in, quite interesting, um, including being out of the body, just watching it happen, so to speak. So, this that was quite interesting. <laughs> what was that experience like? I'm fascinated. Well, <clears throat> well, the the comment, the, well, the thought process was, are oh, we we'll only spin the car and maybe crash it? That was it. <laughs> you know, the fact that I ended up breaking my leg and uh, my nose and <laughs> and all sorts of other all sorts of all sorts of other bits and pieces and the you know and the pulling a lamppost out and pulling it uh, hundred meters down the road and then it collapsing on the car, which could have you know if I didn't die in the first bit. It could have should have caught me in the second bit, according to the ambulance drivers. Yeah. So you the, so the, you start you start to see that with people who end up being in levels of prominence and 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 service in this way tend to have had something that's disabled them in some way or right. created a lack of why do you think that is things? like why do you think what would you put have you got a reasoning behind why you think you had your accident i i, I think it's it's there to detach us from the physical okay. and to and to make us realize that the physical is temporary but yeah. that when you experience something like detachment when this is happening and you're not and you're not in, not in the body, you start to get this this understanding that the, the body is just the vehicle. Mm. And so when you understand this and you've experienced it, then there's no fear of departure from the body. Um and so this this starts the thought process of well, why am I feeling this? What else is out there? And it's um it's quite interesting because although all my life I've been interested in this in this subject, in this reality, this, the greater reality, it's only at certain points that I've re regained my 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 desire. And it was after the accident that I started to become more more interested again. Um, but only later, when I was reintroduced to Reiki, that it started to just take off again in terms of my my real deep interest. But yeah, something but, yeah, that people... I yeah no please go sorry yeah I mean lots of... sorry yeah there's lots of other people who've experienced similar similar things who've become um, capable of 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 broadcasting other important levels of information as well I mean Stephen Hawking's one for example incredible example that you've used there with Stephen Hawking I mean what what a brilliant mind. Uh, and soul, I, I think he was actually. I think I, I think a lot of people say he was a reincarnation of. Um, was it? Um, can't think of who it was. It was someone quite prominent. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I'd have to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking well, of that, I mean, did well, you get any personal messages? you know when Dolores passed over did you I, and I've heard this from many people that knew her and and worked with her um did you get a, a sense of sensing her or a message from her or anything on an individual level from the work that you do in the meditation work that you experience uh hmm I felt that I was still being protected by her in terms of my work. Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> I can edit that out. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I, I always bit, bits I make mistakes on or delays. I, I just I just edit. So don't worry yeah, I'll, about it. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 start, I'll start again. I'm kind. I'll let you know I'm kind in the editing process. <laughs> I always say that to people. So what, what was the question again? <laughs> um, <laughs> What were we were we talking about Stephen Hawking? I think. Um, oh no, um, Dolores with the. Did you you know was there a message or any oh, right, or yeah. anything like that? Yeah. So was there a message from Dolores? Well, the feeling I had was that she was she was looking after me still, 
because there was still the family um, soft spot for me, and there still is, to be honest. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, um, and I know it's still there because I've been able to introduce um, a couple of other authors to Ozark, and they've that's that's been like a key to the door for them. And I'm just doing it with another one, another lady who's working with me at the moment for the World Satsanga series of books. She's doing the, been doing the transcribing and the um, and the compiling. So I've introduced her work as well, which and, and, and she's very good because she's she's able to take all the compendium of information together and 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 sort of simplify it and add a bit of her own understanding, which I mean she includes my my work. She's just sort of compressing together and um, presenting it in a way which is, shall we say, more capable of being digested by more people, which is which is really important. And, and well, that's, that's what looking... I was going to ask you, actually. You know, I've I've heard this before, and, and I don't know if it's been put to you this way. Sometimes we don't have to intellectually understand information. It could completely go over our head, but there's something about certain information that we, that we you know, some, I, I love the expression, some things are, are caught, not taught. It, do you think energetically, even you know intellectually, you might not understand all of the concepts. You do get it on some level. Mm. 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 Yeah, I, mean, I can remember when I was a, I think I was eleven or twelve, lying in bed and having a download, and it's like, and I just saw this, all these different symbols in red coming down in towards me, and it was like. Well, the best way to describe it is like a mixture between Chinese and Klingon. <laughs> That's the, you know, if you've ever seen on Star Trek, they had the, the yeah. sort of Klingon sort of language. It was before before Star Trek was, was broadcast over here. I, I seem to remember, but um, it was all well, about the same time, and it was it felt like that. And then people who read my books, they say they re they receive downloads. They say they re they feel the energy in the books. Yeah. Um, well, I've said I, I've got that, you know, because I've got the audio book. Um, I've got, you know, the the one audio book you've got. Um, you know, uh, the, the the name has just jumped out. It's something of God. God, the history of God. Yeah, sorry, it was just. <laughs> I'll fix that in the editing. So I've got the How audio book. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the audio book, uh, the history of God, and I read. So, you know, I mean, I re-listen and re-listen to that book because I, I I sense at some level energetically I'm receiving something new. And look, some concepts go over my head, but sometimes on the second listen through, I get more. And I love that, you know, it, it is in an audio form for that very reason. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I suspect there's plans to get some of the other books into audio form. Um, but these days, if you've got Kindle, and there's plenty of apps on phones and computers, you, you can just convert that. Kindle into audio. So it's you it's so that. simple now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I think that's great. You know, that, because you know we we all live pretty busy lives these days, and I think we we find ourselves in situations where we could be listening to a book like yours or one of yours um in the car or you know i do it mm. before i fall asleep at night and i set the timer on it so mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i i i know how long I, I generally take to fall asleep and then i'll drift off so it's a great way to go into um the sleep state listening to this mm. information yeah and actually that is the best way to, to absorb things is is, is while you're sleeping so if you, if you have it on very quiet so it's p barely perceivable by your physical ear, then then the rest, then your you know your spiritual ear will, will be picking it up anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. There, I think yeah. these things are good to know, because yeah. you know I've heard from so many people before stuff maybe concepts they don't understand, they just don't you know intellectually they don't get it, so they they discard it. And and I think why I particularly feel really strongly encouraged to push you in your work is I, I, I want to introduce this information to as much people as possible, because I just know there's something so unique and special in it. Um, and even if you don't get it intellectually that you, you are getting it That's right. said, on, on some level. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there was a, um, a lady who, I've recently been in contact with and she said that she could just feel all 
she just feels all of a sudden she's had this block it's awakening moment and she can feel the importance of the work and the information and the and, and the, the depth and detail uh, and obviously not just my work but but that but she but she did mention uh, my work and she said it's just amazing that the, the the books buzz you know that you, you just yeah. feel the books buzzing and then that somebody else some years ago now said that um she, she bought the book the, the first one the history of god and she said i didn't touch it for three years <laughs> i said oh it be, became a it became a book a book you know a doorstop and uh, she said well basically yes and then she did all of a sudden i saw it in the corner where he was in the you know, it's on the floor in the corner somewhere. It had been relegated to the floor. And she don't, I just looked at it. I just felt drawn to it. And whereas previously she couldn't touch it, she grabbed hold of it and devoured it. And she said it made so much sense. All of a sudden it made so much sense. Mm. And it was all, it's, 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 it's like everything has its time and place. It's, mm. it's important to be, if you don't have the key to the door, there's no point in trying to, you know, break the door down because it's just it's just not going to work. Yeah, you know, if you get there too early, if, if somebody has got the key, if you get there too early, you're not going to open the door. If you get there too late, you're not going to open the door. If you get there at the right time, as somebody's got the key, it's seamless. You go straight through the door and to the next door, and it's it's you know, it's it's important to recognise that th everything has the right timing when we're capable of understanding it and capable of it making sense to us as a result of that and actually allowing us to think in deeper ways because we have a a toolkit, you know, a mental toolkit to be able to consider other things. Because, I mean, I've talked to people now who've read not just my book, but Dolores books and, you know, even Eckhart Tolle's books and you know, Neil Walsh's books, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they've said, I'm now thinking of things myself or now picking up things myself because I've, I've opened myself up to this plethora of knowledge. And in doing so, new knowledge is coming through directly to them. So it's, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I love that you said that because uh, Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now was one of the first spiritual books that I read during my, what I deem as awakening experience about 14 years ago. And I remember, and it was an audio version, I remember listening to the audio book on Audible and the first time around, I didn't understand any of it. it. It made no sense to me. I thought, what is he talking about presence, being present moment? And it wasn't until the second time I listened to, because energetically like your books, I sensed there was something in it. There was some energy that was just pushing me back to it. And then on the second read, and the third read, I got it. It was it was something very, very tangible and it completely changed the way I experienced this reality. Yeah, and it would do. I mean, I mean Eckhart Toller's books, I mean, it's about <clears throat> being in this, basically. And I mean, he experienced connectivity in a really profound way. F mm -hmm. Fairly simple to samadhi you know, or the transcendental yes. um, function of meditation. And he experienced that in a a random and explosive way, yeah. and then then he, then he sort of slowly, slowly came back down the frequencies to where he is now. But he never forgot the the feeling of and and, and, the, and the, the knowledge of, the, of how he felt and what he experienced in those times. And so he started, to, and he, of course, he got concepts as well given to him. And there, so really, he's trying to teach us to sort of be be present here not present there and and there's and in doing so you, you you go within yourself and you start to be able to connect with with the greater reality that way so so really that's what he's that's what he's teaching he's teaching also it's a little bit like my avoiding color book but in a completely different way he's teaching us to be in the physical but not, not be of the physical which is a really important concept and it and it also follows the the overall conceptual teachings of of, of, um, of Hinduism and, 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 and yogis in India. Well, it's, even it's 
even yeah. further to that, you know, as the true essence of Christianity and even aspects of Islam, because I'm sure you would agree with this true spirituality or, or truth is truth comes in many different forms, different articulations, essentially mm. points to the same thing. And that's, you know, that's interesting because some years ago I picked up a, a number of different pieces of information to tell me what the different types of books I was going to be doing was. And the world sat sang of books um, have sort of grown and, and suddenly appeared a bit like, a bit like the Avoiding Karma book. But two books down the road from the one I'm working on now is going to be a book based upon understanding the major religions and then stripping them down bare, looking oh, wow. for the commonality and looking to see how it fits in with what I'm understanding. Oh, amazing. I love that. I love it already. That's incredible. How needed is that? You know, the true essence of what these, before yeah. they've been corrupted, and as we know, you know, just do a, a good history lesson, yeah. you'll know how christianity came out of the roman empire had the similarities between the pagan religions of the time um even christmas for example i'm sure you know this uh the adorning of uh, decorations on a tree was actually a pagan um a ritual mm. that was done that was even written in the old testament of the bible actually it's in there yeah, exactly um and and the old testament actually says um, this is a you know sin punishable by God, but yet Christianity embraced this because of um, you know from from the Roman times from Constantine and the Council of Nicaea and the official canon of the Gospels all um, being set up from that time. So mm. we kind of live in this time, don't we? Of the, the information is there. We can see history. We can see the manipulation. Um, something I, I really wanted to ask you about, and I know you cover this uh, in your books, and, and you gave a lecture with Dolores about it, was the what she called in her books the backdrop people. And I know you had mm. a different way of articulation in your books. Can you talk about mm. that and how that works for people to understand? Well, they're two different things, but they support each other, which is interesting, isn't it? So, so in fact, when I first mentioned it, Dolores sort of went, <laughs> did a double take <laughs> on stage, which was quite interesting to see. Um, backfill people are basically our creations. It, if, if you if you if you go to a play in a in a theatre, or you see some of the the older films, now new films, you have a blue screen and they 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 project all that with computers, the, the background, don't they? Um, yeah, green basically. screen, blue screen, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Those, those sorts of things, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in the, 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 the theatre, it was painted, you know, they, they painted a huge sort of canvas at the back of the, the back of the, the back of the, <clears throat> the, the stage as, as the backdrop. And so... The word backdrop means that you're these people are in the in the background, basically. Like and extras they're, they're, in a play or a movie. Yeah. But they but they but they, they don't have the they don't have souls because they don't exist except in our own minds and our own desire to have them there. We expect to see people in a train station. We expect to see people in an airport. We expect to see people in, in a park, for example, we expect to see the park. <laughs> you know, so we create this construct where things that we expect based upon our programming in our incarnation are there. And that's supported by everybody else who has a similar or same or slightly different, but nevertheless um compatible thought process. And so we create these these individuals and, and objects and, and animals and plants and, and everything else to allow us to exist here and work within the within the construct that we have and those people who are really here those who are incarnate souls interact with us and us with them and so there are you know 
lots and lots of these these, these sort of these sort of backdrop people around and backdrop um, buildings, backdrop you know environments, etc., etc., etc. The backfill people are, is a different concept. We we are ascending, going up the frequencies you know, in our physical bodies slowly. Some people are going faster than, than others. And that means we move into the next frequential level, which is always, in my mind, called the new earth. And we can we can talk about that in a moment if you want to. But the next frequential level <clears throat> is higher than where we are now. And so the average individual, the average immersed soul in their incarnation, you know, they're, they're, they're fully immersed in their incarnation, so they think, believe, and act that they're the human body, don't move up those frequencies. So the people who do move up the frequencies they move out of the perceptual range of those who's, who are immersed in their incarnation. Now, there are numbers of, there's quite a lot of people doing this right now, individually, and, 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 and they can they come back down to here as well, and they go backwards and forwards, depending upon their, their moods, and their frequential states, how they think, behave, and act, and, and, and those individuals that they, that they desire to interact with. And, and as a result, if, if we all started to disappear one by one very very quickly we'd, we'd soon lose at uh, least half the population of the earth so there's another group of souls being allowed to incarnate only about one once and and they're protected from karma because they they're very easily attracted to or addicted to materialistic things thoughts behaviors actions status material wealth power all of these different things and there's, there's, their, their sentient quality is sort of in between the, 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 the sentient quality associated with those souls that incarnate as human beings and those that incarnate as animals. So they're in, they're in between the two. So they're being allowed to incarnate to backfill for those souls that are, that are incarnate still that have moved on to the next level. And so we have these, the, the backfill people. So they're backfilling. And there's a lot. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a disturbingly large amount on the planet right now, probably around fifty eight percent. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so, how would we? You know, how would one detect? I mean, could one? You know, someone give birth to one of these? You know, background or backdrop? Back fill. Back fill. Yeah. Back, back fill. fill. Yeah. So it's like, um, like it's like I mean, it, it, it sounds derogatory, but it's, it, but it's not. <laughs> but but the back fill means you've. If you've dug a hole, you're back filling the hole with the with the earth, basically. So it's so it's replacing what's gone. That's the whole the whole point of it. Yeah. Um, basically, they are they're within themselves a lot. They still they still can be successful in in, in business and those you know, the material sides of things. And but you can you can see that they're not they've not got a a thought process or a concept. Well, the ability to have concepts or work with concepts that are above and beyond the gross physical, yeah. and and you can just feel the energies. And we quite, know we've like, got a lot of those people in our families, right? We know all those yeah. Yeah. people. I'm sure everyone yeah. is relating to this as well. Yeah, even, you know, even standard, even this sort of standard soul that's in the human body now that isn't one of the back backfield souls, they can be low. You know, they can be low in their environment in their um, evolutionary progression. And they can be sort of on a similar level, basically, specifically if they've only just started to incarnate in the, in this location where we've got individualized free will. Mm -hmm. So, in in reality, if you're a higher frequency, you can tell them, you can tell them their their body morphs into a certain type of body, their features morph into a certain type of feature, and um, they. They think, behave, and act in a similar, the same way all the time. They're very, they're very um, selfish. They're very materialistic, and they don't believe that the that the laws apply to them. Basically, so you can just you can just tell you can just tell. They and they've got a very aggressive demeanor as well. Mm. It's almost so, like I think of those wording lacking soul. You know, you might say he or she is soulless. I mean that would make sense in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the level of sentience associated with them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of I mean, a lot all, of the... narcissistic people kind of fit that. 
We have an epidemic of narcissists, I think, in this society. And I think a lot of those seem to uh, to fit quite nicely into that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they do. I mean, narcissism is a new concept that's, that's uh, being observed now from the psychological um, and, and, and psychometric perspective, isn't it, really? Which is, which is interesting. But it, again, it's born from these individuals and also born from the... the um, the fact that we can have subsouls, we can we can have shards, so we can divide as our our own sentience and energy was 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 individualized from our higher self or or Godhead in the Hindu texts over soul. Oh, Dolores, the soul. Is, uh, Dolores the yeah, spoke of yeah, the over true energy itself in my in my terminology. Yeah, they <clears throat> we can also do the same thing. We can divide a small individualize a smaller unit of our own sentience, which can also incarnate. And and basically, the 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 quality of sentience, or should they, should I say, the volume of sentience, is so significantly low that they're probably on the same level as these as these backfield people as well. So yeah. we, you know, if I was if, if I was asked to say, you know, is that a backfield person or is that, is that a shard? I'd have to look at, I'd have to sort of log into them, quite, you know. We've we've quite some focus to be able to understand whether it's a shard or or, or a backfield person because you can see so, you can you can see no sentient straight away, but you yeah. but depending whether it's a shard or a you know a subsoul or a second you know um <laughs> or a or a backfield person is a, is a different categorization of what the soul is. So, for example, yeah. Ben, would you, have you ran this exercise yourself? You look at maybe a, a world leader, someone on the world stage, someone maybe that fits this kind of, you know, a, they fit the narcissistic person, the the, the shallowness, <laughs> the superficialness. Have you kind of explored this with individuals that maybe we're all aware of to see if they are in fact one of these people? Um. Oh. I'm working with one or two who have those traits. I'm trying to work, trying to work with them to <clears throat> move them away from that, from that, which is which, you know, so help them help them evolve if you want to. But in terms of world leaders, we we know of we know, we say we certainly <laughs> yeah. know of three. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we certainly know of three, maybe four actually. <laughs> but, there's, but, there's, but there's lots more. There's lots more, um, and and some some world leaders. Um, uh, have more than one soul if they if they're going to be great world leaders they have more than one soul in the same body and so it's a collective function in terms of how they how they operate and how they interact with the the people around them in terms of how they deal with their responsibility mm. so some some leaders have got a significant amount of sentience associated with them wow explain that concept and i've never heard that myself but that concept of having more than one soul how does that work? Well, basically, um, the way to the simple way to understand it is think of the the human body as a motor car, and you've got one soul who's the the primary the primary animating soul. That's the that's the soul who's going to going to go through the incarnation with a life plan, and is going to animate the body, and then you have another one, two, three seven eight souls maybe <clears throat> in extreme circumstances who are just passive backseat passengers and it may be that they just want to experience what this person's experiencing this soul's experiencing or maybe they're they haven't incarnated on earth yet and so they're they're learning how to experience individualized free will because individualized free will is extremely potent as a an evolutionary accelerant and so they're probably learning how to exist and interact with people and looking at the mistakes that this particular soul is making so they can be just there sitting there doing nothing whilst the the, the, the primary animating soul who's, who's doing the incarnation is doing the work there are <laughs> there are times though when they get a bit enthusiastic and they want to have a go at themselves <laughs> So they can move out of their compartmentalized state and then start to try to animate the body at the same time. And that's when we get things like you know, you know, bipolarism, if there's just one, one soul involved, involved, you know, two in the same body. 
yeah, or, or split personality. Of it's a, so that could be a good way of understanding something like schizophrenia and multiple mm. personality disorders uh, because they're very mm. prevalent, I think particularly in this day and age when we when we seem to over diagnose everything we we, we realize how common um yeah. those sorts of yeah. phenomena well, are yeah well I'm, I'm just um being i mean a couple of sessions with somebody who's a retired psychologist and that person is really interested in the in the, the in the thought process that it's not it's not a chemical imbalance that's causing seven different personalities in somebody's body it's actually seven different personalities they're different souls wow. in in the body and they've and they've <laughs> they've they've decided to try to have a go themselves they got so enthusiastic about what they're experiencing they want to do it themselves but it's not the right time so that causes confusion of course yeah so it's <clears throat> so she's really interested in this and the, and the therapy is to basically recompile recompartmentalize these souls yeah. in a way that they can't break free again yeah. they, they, they stay <laughs> It's like being in a taxi when you've got a grip and you've got a sort of a barrier between you and the driver. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah, know so that trauma uh, and, and, you know, from a psychological point of view, I know that trauma can actually trigger this, um, <clears throat> de um, this process um, where personality or the personality can split or fragment into many different, what they deem as alters or altered states um, I've seen it with a lot of people that maybe have been through horrific abuse and it's, it's, it's described as a coping mechanism. So they, they fracture essentially <laughs> the personality. Mm. Would you think this is different or maybe this is what we're speaking about here? Um, there are times when uh, the, 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 the animating soul has a, um, a problem, an accident. And at that point, they actually might that might be used as a what they call a termination juncture, <clears throat> where they can leave the body and not accrue any down downstream evolutionary debt by not being here and interacting with other souls and then those souls interacting with other souls. And so another soul can then walk into the body and take over. And that clearly will have a different personality because you've got a different level of, of experience over the number of incarnations it's had. And you know it's got a different level of understanding things, and it's obviously a different level of evolution as well. So that's where you can get personality changes as a function of an accident. And but sometimes, if there's if there's abuse of, of involved, for example, the the soul might not want to be incarnate at all. So they may really try to to leave the incarnation. Now, if there's other souls in the body already. Then they might try to take over because the body needs to be maintained. There needs to be a soul driving the body, otherwise the body just stops working. Um, or again, there may be a condition where <clears throat> another soul comes in to help out. Maybe there's been a, a an agreement in the energies where another soul can come in to try to help that soul stay in the incarnation. Mm. So then that soul would take over every now and then to excuse me to allow the the body to be to be perpetuated and give the other soul some respite yeah well i i think dolores cannon called this phenomenon the the walk-in experience where a, a, maybe a soul has decided that it's had enough and that it makes a contract with another soul to take over and apparently this occurs mm -hmm. during the sleep state um, so it's not even noticed so much. Um, apparently, it's traumatic. Uh, I mean, is is that what you're describing here? A walk-in experience? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's that, that's exactly the same. Yeah, so it, it is. It's a walk-in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there could be there's lots of different categories of walk-in, and I describe those in the book uh, Psycho Spiritual Healing. Okay, because right. and, and I, I think also. I think also in the Anne dialogues as well, the, the number of different types of walking are described there by Anne, my, my late wife. Yeah. yeah. Who and, and you and just feeding back very quickly back to a question you said about, you know, did I receive any messages from Dolores? In that book, we had a small moment where we had a dialogue between myself Anne, and Dolores in the book. And I was so surprised, I think I actually said, wow. 
<laughs> in the text because I didn't expect it because because the Anne dialogues was written um I think around 2000 uh it was started to be written around 2015 16 so two years after <clears> after yeah always left yeah yeah so yeah so it's in those two books how to how to categorize um the, or the different categories of walk-ins in the yeah. the end dialogues and it's in yeah. spiritual healing yeah and I'll make that available on the screen so people can see where to get that. And I, I believe you can get them from Ozark Publishing. Are they available on? Are all your books available on Amazon that people can can get to yeah. order? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's fortunate that your listeners are in Australia because there's, there's an Amazon, there's a main Amazon, Amazon depot in Australia, so that's quite yes. good. So you get you, you get them from Amazon dots. Dot co dot uh, AU, I think you can get them from Amazon definitely. If it yeah. was New Zealand, it's, it's a little bit difficult because everything has to come from Australia to get to New Zealand. So, yeah, they're there. You can get them from some some good bookshops. Uh, um, uh, Watkins, they're available on or Kindle, Nook, Watkins, lots of obviously Kindle. They're what? available. Yeah, great. And Amazon's great in that way. I mean, I was fortunate enough actually a few weeks ago to receive, because I know it's largely out of print, uh, your father-in-law's book, Cosmos, um, nice big thick oh, original well thing in the in the mail actually the other week. Um, it's my reading material over the uh, over the holiday season, but I was very fortunate to get Thank that because slower. I know it's <laughs> it's quite difficult to get the printed version. Yeah, did I did I send you the um, the, the the summary of it? You the, sent the, me actually the the PDF version, and yeah, and I think uh, it was yeah. the the summary of it. But I, I've gr I'm yeah. so glad I've got the physical book. That I can um, highlight. Well, and... I'll, I'm going to have to thank you because you were the reason why you you re remem reminded me to um, put it back into print because it went out, it went out of print with Ozark because it's such a tome of information. It's it's it, you know, it's it's difficult to go through, and then I republished it through Amazon because oh, the copyright on you. returned back to. Me. Well, you know, I got so a really what... strong. I get a really strong sense, and I, I, I'm I'm sensing from the other side. I'm getting the the chills when I'm saying that. So I know I'm on on that point. That information, maybe it wasn't ready at the time, but I think people are starting to be ready for that information. Mm. So I'm so glad to hear that's back in pre. And will yeah. that be available on Kindle for people um, to to get that book, Cosmos? I think it's on Kindle, but it's also on hardback as well. Great. Okay, great. So Amazon. Yeah. Excellent. I'm 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 glad that is. And without, yeah, said, without, that without doubt, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely on. It's definitely on Kindle, and it's, and, it, and um, I, I know it's on it's on paperback as well because I I had to go through the the Amazon system twice to do it. And I mean, this book yeah. was your father-in-law's, and correct me if I'm wrong, this was his life, life's work. And he spent many years compiling and being allowed to do certain research at his workplace to be able to get this information. Is that, is that correct? Um, it. It is actually he sacrificed his own career progression as a function of it because what happened was his <clears throat> his professor didn't like the the fact that he was dealing with something else other than because he was he was an, he, he invented a number of different new welding t techniques and technologies working for Birmingham University um, um, engineering and science department. So he got to, he became a doctor of science, which is DSC, which is a very difficult way of getting um, your your doctorate. And he became a senior research fellow, but he could have become a professor without doubt. But because his professor <clears throat> said, I don't like what you're doing, you can do it if you want to, but you're not going to go any further in your, your, your career progression. And so basically he, he stayed at this lowly level so he could continue to do this work, and uh, 
he accepted that. I mean, you know, he's a wonderful gentleman, really wonderful gentleman, really humble, um, but really sort of motivated to get the information out there. And um, so when I, when I got the, the Cosmos book published through Ozark first, he was amazed. <laughs> yeah. Well, said, I mean, what did Dolores think of the book? Did she read it personally herself? Well, it was it was already it was already published um, with another sort of self-publishing group, and um, so they hadn't got to do any work at all with the editing. Basically, it was all done and dusted. Done. All they had to do is to was, was to publish it and put their own cover on. And um, Dennis's words were, "I don't need to be here anymore because you've you've perpetuated you've allowed the perpetuation of, of my work." Wow. And and literally six months later, he was gone. Wow. Wow. It's another yeah. case of that happening that we were speaking about earlier when someone's yeah. work is... Master's nowhere to go. <laughs> we, we need to go. Well, I'm not surprised because, you know, I mean, this is a, a, a tough reality that we all find ourselves in. We, uh, I know Dolores always said, you know, we come here to experience um, limitation, experience limitation. We come here to experience... You know, being in physicality, having pain, and and all the adversity mm. that we tend to find here, I can understand why, when one has completed their mission, that they would you know move into different states. Because we mm. often, from yeah. this perspective, view death very negatively. I think we've been conditioned to to really fear death for most of our lives. In fact, <clears throat> some people forget to live their too afraid of dying that they forget mm. to live while they're here um i love it that you had that experience though where you observed this this car accident mm. and obviously mm. took any fear away from you of death and the dying experience because you mm. saw it as a transition mm. yeah and in fact when I, when I went to hospital i'd lost a lot of blood i had seven pints of blood <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I basically trashed my right femur and my um, wow. my right tibia, and um, I didn't realise at the time that if I'd have moved in any one direction, um, the, the, the the shards of my, my my right femur could have cut through the my um, femoral artery, and that would have been yeah. it. Okay, that, that, that would have yeah. yeah yeah. Obviously, yeah. you yeah. had a a reason <laughs> to to stay around, and I think that's quite obvious why you're why you're here and you're on this yeah. mission tell me about the new earth what dolores you know I, I i think she largely came up with this idea of a new earth and many others have come along to add to that information or maybe uh, articulated in a different way and eckhart tolle is one person that comes to mind i mean that is the mm. title of i think his second book which is um uh, the new earth Mm. So basically my understanding of the new earth is a, is a frequential ascension whilst we're still incarnate the i could explain the multiversal environment but <laughs> we'd be a bit too long but what i will say is that the physical universe is unique in so much as it's the only universe that has 12 frequencies to create it and that's because the 12 frequencies are so low but they're all required it's a bit like the old days of having floppy disks when you had to have about 12 floppy disks to you know to load a program up for example and whereas these days you can put thousands of the same file on a, on a single memory stick it's about finitude so there, was, there needs to be these 12 frequencies to create the physical universe all universes after that don't need to have 12 frequencies because the finitude associated with the next frequency up is significantly higher and therefore the content associated with the universal environment is supported by it so <clears throat> within the physical universe, what we experience right now is the lowest of the frequencies, the first three frequencies. Scientists call this the third dimension, which is nonsense, because basically all three dimensions are is a, a metric for volume, you know, height, width, and depth. So if a, a, a dimension is a much higher piece of structure. So where we are now, we're in the first full dimension because the first full dimension houses the the first the, the physical universe. And it's the only universe in this dimension. All of the dimensions have got 36. So 
that's a bit of a summary of the multiversal environment. And there's 12 full dimensions, by the way. Where we are now in the gross physical is, is so limited because of the low frequencies that we can only perceive and interact with what's around us. But when we go to the next level, we see more content. There's more content in the universe, not so many dark, dark patches in between galaxies, because there's more the galaxies exist on different frequential levels and above. And also the difference more content on the Earth. And there's other entities, including incarnate human beings, who've moved up to a different level of frequency. So you can incarnate at a high frequency on Earth, and you can also ascend to a frequency as a result of working on yourself, you know, avoiding karma, basically. So when people ascend during a an incarnation, they they move out of the perceptual range of everybody else, basically. So that's my understanding is that's the new earth. The new earth is the fourth, is the is the the content associated with the earth and its population associated with the earth at the fourth frequency fourth frequential level which also includes here by the way so but we where we are now we can't see what's in the fourth frequency level but part of the earth that has the the, the content of the third the first three creating the gross physical and then the fourth but people on the fourth can see what's on the fourth and what's on the third mm. so they see more content and have more interaction possibilities with other entities including including those humans that have ascended plus ourselves so this is what she was talking about a different version of the earth now in this higher frequency we, the fourth frequency level is is basically where i would classify as being the lower astral we start to have a, a higher level of communicative bandwidth which means we start to become more connected with whom we are our higher self our oversoul godhead um true energetic self and the rest of the universal content around it so our communicative bandwidth increases so we start to be able to know more understand more we start to rely less on gross physical food and we start to understand more concepts and we're able to communicate more readily for instance with things like telepathy and those sorts of things mm. we can ascend from the fourth level and go to the fifth level which again has more content so we have more universal content so the, the gaps in between the, the the galaxies start to get reduced by more galaxies popping into existence because they they exist from the fifth frequency upwards for example and there's more content on the earth and there's more you know, population on the earth because there's those who have ascended to that level as well one group springs to mind is, is the, the the mayan society civilization those who in, those who incarnated that in that, those who incarnated in that civilization moved up to the fourth and they moved up to the fifth so they can incarnate directly into the fifth frequency whilst still being on earth so they've also got a, a increased level of communicative ability because their bandwidth has increased again because it's a higher frequency and so they won't see what's on the sixth frequency but they'll see what's on their frequency and the fourth and the third so the higher up you go the more content is associated with the with the universe <clears throat> and our location in this instance the, the the earth and we start to see more individuals who are incarnating on those levels and sometimes they're in different body types so you know the aliens are already are already here there's just they're a different frequency they're a higher frequency and we know they are because their vehicles move they do some strange vehicular movements that, that couldn't possibly happen if they were using in, you know modern aerodynamics or even futuristic aer aerodynamics so the so there isn't just one new earth there are another kind of nine yeah <laughs> so we get and the, this yeah. makes a lot of sense because you know dolores spoke about the splitting of the you know the old earth and the new earth and she referenced the the New Testament and particularly the book of Revelation, where it actually spoke about this prophetically as this being an event. And Christianity would call it the second coming of Christ or the, 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 the new earth. I think that's where the term comes mm. from. So mm. this was being even spoken about, and you referenced the Mayans as well. And 
this experience has happened to a large group of people on earth before um, because it did happen to the Mayans. What part of this process do you think we're in right now? This is 2022, December. Where do you think we are right now in this process? Um, well, it's all happening individually <clears throat> rather than as a group. We expected a group ascension in 2012. Yeah. 12th of the 12th, 2012 interesting use of numbers yeah. <laughs> um we we expected a group ascension but it doesn't happen that way um there can be an acceleration which might be considered as a group ascension but in essence we do it individually and my feeling is that we've we've pretty much if i was to use the percentages that i've got of backfield people and say well that really illustrates the percentage of people who've ascended then that's about right so we're probably just a, bit, a little bit, a little bit over halfway through it. And you, I mean, you effect. spoke earlier about these great changes that we're noticing in the world. You know, environmentally, a, a, a larger consciousness around being good stewards to the planet. I mean, that's really obvious now. I think back five, ten years ago, there just wasn't that that care so much about the planet. But it's yeah. almost. <clears throat> you know, not politically correct to to do anything that's not green yeah. these days. So it's there's clearly a shift in the way we view the planet. Um, many people have advocated that, and I think collectively we have we we seem to have got the message. And there, and there are <clears throat> there are souls who are born or have walked in into a body who are going to be born, who are going to be advocates of the custodianship of our planet and our progression. Um, these are individuals who I discovered uh, would start to happen back in 2014 called the white children. We talk about crystal children, we talk about rainbow people, to talk about, talk about um, um, indigo children. This, 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 These are a different category altogether. And there's only going to be 12 of them, and they're going to be sort of basically equi-spaced around the globe. But they're, they're, there's three versions of them. There's four that are going to be qualitative leaders. So they'll have big followings. There's four that are going to be, um, sorry, quantitative leaders are going to have big followings. Qualitative leaders are going to have just a few people, but they're just going to you know affect a few people who would be the, um, the instigators of the work for them, so to speak. And then you've got the people who are the last four who are in the background who just make things happen wow they just touch actually the and make, make it. you saying that reminded me of concepts and i know you've read dolores's book so i don't know how familiar you are with all of the contents and the subjects but there was a, a book series that she did called conversations with nostradamus in the end of that book, I think one of the last volumes of the book, she spoke about this concept of the great genius. Have you heard of that term? And is that maybe what you're talking about here? Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah. And let well, me surmise that. Well, let me surmise that. I mean, she essentially spoke about one person or maybe it could be more than one physical physical people um and this she called it in the book the great genius this person would be responsible or people would be responsible for a lot of innovation in the world for creating a lot of change around the world and this was something when she was in conversations with nostradamus um, and she was transcribing and translating the quatrains uh, correctly because he was contacted her from another time or space um, to say mm. that they hadn't been transcribed yeah. correctly. Um, and that was the information that she got. And that's just, as you were saying that about these white children, mm. that, that came into my mind. And I'm just wondering if there's, if this is, well, which is often with you and Dolores, it's different wording, but it's the same thing. Well, 
the the white children's sort of part of it so the quality of children who are you just deal with people you know a few a few people the quantity of do with a lot and the those in the back in the in the, yeah, in the background so to speak just touching the odd things and making things happen the what as you were talking i i did a a quick question yeah and the term genius is collective yes and it's based upon the lack of understanding of the soul at the time because when dolores does her work she's she's talking to the soul in that time period so they don't they don't understand computers they don't understand cars they don't understand uh, uh, airplanes those sorts of things all they know is Dolores is communicating with that with that soul then, not that soul with the collective knowledge of the incarnations now. So that so that the, the person she's communicating with, who was Nostradamus or has provided a link to Nostradamus, is communicating with Dolores in that time frame. So th the great genius is basically us collectively suddenly having remarkable thought processes remarkable actions remarkable levels of invention we would the great genius means the great technological spiritual medical explosion basically where we are now and and i love that you said that well, i got the you. chills that, as you were saying that because i got that sense as well that it wasn't an individual person per se mm. this was talking to a collective and it goes along with with exactly what your books talk about, what her books talk about. And I love this. I love the synchronicity when it occurs with articulation. The, the I've been told yeah, I've been told right now we're in the information age, which is a which is a a technical description based upon where we think we are. We're actually dawning on the age of Aquarius. But we're gonna but this will also be classified as being the age of genius where lots of things will, will start to be created and invented. Mm. The age of I know creation. we touched on that yeah. earlier. And I get this sense, particularly in the spiritual community, we've chatted about this before. It seems largely a shame that you, you do see advancements. And, and I think we're on the precipice of a lot of them. We've, we, we spoke earlier about some medical advancements that are being made. And I even heard a report the other day about Alzheimer's and apparently there's some big breakthroughs mm. uh, on that. Mm. And I, I was so glad to hear that because I had a, have had a couple of relatives that unfortunately mm. have really suffered at the hands of that. And I know many people watching will as well. I think there's well, my, my brother's my brother's the same so, in, yeah, in New yeah. Zealand. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize he had that. So you, I, I'm sure you heard that news, and you, it probably warms your heart as well when you hear things like that, because you know, obviously, how debilitating that illness is, and and what mm -hmm. it does to the brain. It's very exciting to me when I hear about this and and other breakthroughs with technology. There seems to be a portion though of society and even within the spiritual community, I sort of put it into that conspiratorial um, group where they often will see this as a really negative or there's an agenda behind it, or they don't want change. I feel like a lot of people, right? If you ask a group of people in a room and if they want change, every hand will go up in the room. But if you ask the same group of people, if, uh, they want to change suddenly you know the hands don't go up so much because i think we all like, like i think we all thing. like change i think we all love change and we love the idea of change but a lot of us are very resistant to actually having to to do the change ourselves and that's the hardest thing to do is to change ourselves because we we gradually become the person we are <clears throat> as a function of our incarnation and how our soul integrates with the body and the environment and develops this individualized temporary personality we call the ego, um, which is because the the aspect of the soul is almost totally cut off from its its higher self or over soul or true energetic self because of the, 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 the very limited communicative bandwidth. And so, the ability to change is 
is very difficult because you get comfortable. <laughs> the soul gets comfortable. I should say the ego gets comfortable in being dominant and it likes yeah. to have what it's got. And it doesn't like to give up, give up various different levels of status, wealth, power, Indeed. Um, presence, yeah. position. Yeah. Or, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't it wouldn't bother me if we, if we gave up motor cars tomorrow. I, mean, I like cars because I, you know, I worked in the automotive industry for a long time, but but I, it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. I actually love um, public transport, and it's a it's a it's a shame we don't have enough really efficient public transport around the world because yeah. if it's done well, then we don't need cars, you know. And I think that we have the potential to change, but we have we must we need to have the desire to change. Yeah, that's really well put, the desire to change, because we get quite comfortable and often humanity has a tendency to uh, procrastinate until, you know, it's the 11th hour where I'm thinking of this time of year. I mean, it's obvious people doing their Christmas shopping or holiday, it's holiday mm. season and buying gifts and the shops know they have to extend the hours because people tend to leave it right mm. to the last minute before they get that last uh, thing. But we tend mm. to do that collectively, don't we? We wait for the problem to emerge before we take action. So it's part of the human condition, I think. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's rather than having what's called total preventative maintenance, we, we, we wait until it falls apart <laughs> let me try and fix and it then fix it <laughs> which, is, we, which is not the one which, which which we don't want people to do if we're flying if we're traveling in an airplane but we'd be quite happy to do it at home aren't we <laughs> yes. we only <laughs> we only fix our, our central heating boiler when it breaks rather than it maintain all the time or worse over our fridge <laughs> yeah it's uh i you know but i get the sense uh, and I, you, you, because you speak about this as being an individual thing, this this ascension event happening on an individual level, and I completely agree with that. And that's certainly my conclusion of of all of this. And I've come to that over the last couple of years that this was going to be happening on an individual level, but then it would be collectively. So collectively, it's mm. happening to us individually. It's happening for me, and I've certainly, within a space of two years, completely experiencing this reality very, very differently. I've seen things that you might say miracles occurring. Well, my old self would have called miracles, and now I don't see it so much in that term, uh, more of just a realization of, of, of remembering who and what I truly am and then just living that out. So many people are going through that. So many people are changing at a rapid rate. What do you think is next on the agenda? What are we going to start seeing in the world? Do you think those that are maybe the background people or the backdrop people, do you, do you think uh, a lot of this information is, 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 is going to become more widely accepted? Does it need to be? Well, there's... There's something called triangulation happening right now, and it's either direct line triangulation or or um, area based or volumetric based triangulation, where we all affect each other. And so, as one ascends, th that ascension affects somebody else. Whereas we rise to the frequency, that affects somebody else. We, we sometimes talk to somebody; it makes no sense to them at all, or they, or they debunk it, and then sometimes, like sometimes, they tell, "Well, that makes sense." So we, we're affecting each other sort of directly and volumetrically so to speak and that creates a snowball effect so we are going to start to see things happen more and more yeah more more faster so the sort of ascension process will come to a point where although it's still individual it will appear to be a group based ascension because it's not being sucked in you you start to be affected by it and you start to think and change you change your thought processes and the way you think behave and act in concurrent in, in accordance with the the general i mean right now we, we've, we've gone through a general low frequency thought behavior and action that's not quite medieval but it's not far away from it but in you know in in, in reality but we, if we go the other way then we start to move up the frequencies we start to all collectively work together so i i see 
that we're going to through the, through the triangulation, she's starting to pick up again. We're going to start to be more collectively, individually, and therefore collectively responsible for our own thoughts, behaviors, and actions, and therefore considerate, not only of <clears throat> our local environment, you know, our home, our home and our garden, but the suburb we live in, the city we live in, the country we live in, the planet, and also how we interact with others as well. We're going to become more considerate and more service orientated, mm. you know, thinking of other people. And we've had lots of experiences where this is happening now, just with the COVID um, crisis. And prior to that, there was, there was AIDS as well, and the, the, you know, SARS and you know, bird flu and everything else. We start to see people start to work together again in, as a, in the same way we, we worked together in the First and Second World War. You know, we, we all clubbed together, we all helped each other. That was happening. It's, it's fragmented a bit now, but it's not totally fragmented. And people are starting to become more um, affected by what's happening in their community and helping their community and, and in a positive way, either by being of direct service or being a, a teacher by example. And so with all this creates, you know, once we're immersed in this, you have to change. You know, if you're immersed in, if you're immersed in negativity, you, you, you become negative. If you're immersed in positivity... Right. You become positive, and that, and then, then this becomes an, an upward spiral. <clears throat> yeah, which is which yeah. gets faster and it's so, so obvious. It's so obvious that for for many people, uh, are experience that upward trajectory. Um, but at the same time, don't you recognize others are descending into, you know, deeper unconsciousness? And Dolores Cannon said there would actually be an event where a lot of people would leave the planet at the same time. And I don't know if you're noticing this and, and I'm sure people in my audience are, I am on an individual level. I've heard more people die this year and it was, it's not because of the pandemic for various other reasons than probably any year I can remember. And you even look at people in the public eye, but there's, there's been a large amount of people that have exited this reality, the not just older, <clears throat> but all sorts of ages for various different reasons. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And if, I mean, Celia made a comment yesterday. She said, I was surprised. She saw um, a variety of performance where the proceeds of the, of the, of the performances are given to the, um, to the benefit of those actors, families who, that, or, or family, that. people's families who, <clears throat> who need financial support. It, 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 yeah, it, all the proceeds goes to that. It's, it's a benevolent fund. And she said, I was amazed at how many famous people have left the planet this year. Mm. You know, and, and that's just an that's just a minute example of people. Well, that's something that's tangible B we can see because yeah. obviously, you know, I spoke to an individual the other day and he said, In the last four months, I've had four family members die. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's shocking, but I'm hearing and seeing that a lot. And I, I think looking at people in the public eye is is some way of measuring just just the amount that this is. This yeah, is yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a good metric to use, and you can extrapolate it out for the world population. I mean, to to be honest, <clears throat> the world population needs to shrink dramatically mm. because. We've got we're nearly they're talking about you know within the next five or ten years hitting the the the, the, the eight billion mark. Mm. Mm. In the first world war, we had five. Um, we've increased since. Sorry, I'll start again. From the beginning of the first world war, we've increased our population fivefold in the world. That's a frightening amount. In a hundred years, we've increased fivefold. Mm. If you look at the time of the Great Plague in the, in the UK and Europe <clears throat> to the time of the First World War, we only increased by 100%. So, so basically, we've gone from something like 750 million world population to about 1.2 million. Mm. In those hundreds of years between the Great Plague in London and the, and, and, and the rest of Europe and the beginning of the, of the 20th century. So it's a, it's a small, you know, 750 million ish. It's like, well, perhaps even perhaps not even that much. 700, 600, 700 million population increase in in, a, in several hundred years. And now look at us. We've gone from being from increasing over a few hundred years to by 
six, seven hundred million people, you know, incarnate souls, to to basically an additional six point eight billion, which is mm. the planet can't sustain. But well, you yeah, know, and it's stuff. such a contentious issue because. You know, the moment you sort of say that, and I, I know Dolores said that in so many ways and different things, and and I, I read a lot of the messages that come through when that, you know, she's calling for depopulation. This is an agenda, and, uh, you know, this this has ramifications, and it's certainly not what we're, what we're advocating. But, I, but I, I largely agree with exactly what you're saying. I think that, you know, we, we, we have become very, very large as a society and the resources and the strain that is putting on. And obviously we're not advocating for any kind of depopulation, but I think it, it it's good to probably accept the fact that we will, and many that are watching this, I'm sure you will, I'm sure I will live longer lives um, because of newer technologies that are just going to be available. I mean, we spoke about Alzheimer's before. We know that largely th this is what a, a lot of people succumb to in the later years of their life because of there being no effective treatment. I think that's going to change. So we know we're probably with technology and, and, and advancement, we're going to live a lot longer. How do we balance all of that though? Do you, do you think this is just happening karmically anyway, and people are leaving soul agreements and so on? Or do you <clears> think well, that my, 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 my understanding of things like dementia and Alzheimer's is, is that souls want to leave slowly rather than. That's I've always came to that conclusion as well. And it's also to help the family be able to deal with exactly. losing them. Yeah. Because by the time that they are ready, ready to go, token the body's ready to sort of stop functioning. They, they, act, the family members want them to go because they can see. Isn't it? The isn't it? A, even though it seems really cruel, but it, it, it is kind of a a way, a, a really way of people processing that, particularly if they're not ready in the beginning stages, where you mm. they get to that point exactly, they want them to go. Hmm. Exactly, it's 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 creating the condition where the family members aren't creating a blockage for the person going, because I mean the number of people who ask me to do energy healing on a family member who's got stage three, probably stage four cancer, for example, and I say, well, why do you want them to be to be healed? So we we we, we want them to be here. So yeah, but you want them. You want them to be here. That this is their chosen way of leaving their incarnation, and you're stopping them because your energy that once that is selfish energy because you want them in your life mm. is stopping them from from leaving because you're yeah. you're providing a a magnetic force to <laughs> keeping the soul here. Just um, just. Just give them lots of love and they'll be, they'll be gone faster than you can think about it. Yeah. And often they, when people die, isn't it interesting when people transition, they often, you know, a loved one may be by the bedside, by, by the bedside and they'll go out for five minutes and they've been there for all day or all, all day and all night. And then when they're yeah, gone, yeah. they leave. <laughs> it, it happens. My, my, my mother was, 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 um, downstairs in a, in, a, in a bed they had downstairs for because she had um, a lymphoma and um she was she, the last three months of her life she basically just ended up sort of starving herself to death basically mm. and dad went into the kitchen oh. and came back and she'd gone she'd gone <laughs> yeah see yeah. so he was so he was distraught he was distraught that he, he wasn't there when she left and then when it was dad's turn to go he 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 he'd ended up having parkinson's disease and a twisted bowel so he he was in hospital, and it was a really difficult time to get into hospital because we had a snow, a bad snowstorm back in 2017, <laughs> and so I got there eventually and um, was with him the rest of the night and the next day, and I, and I said to the nurse, "Do you think I can go home? I've got some Christmas cards to do. I can bring them here and write them out with Dad." She said, "Oh, okay." No, as soon as I got home, I had a message on my phone saying, "Can you come back to the hospital quick?" Oh, so so, got these Christmas cards. Went back, and of course he'd gone. Uh, he waited. For me, he waited for me to clear off, basically, and um, because he he didn't want he, he knew that he was just hanging around for me. 
and the same with Anne. With Anne, I mean, Anne ha waited a long time, and, I, and eventually um, we had a satsanga, which I still do once a month. And I asked them all to send energy for her to to, to leave as soon as possible because with the, with the condition she got, which was a, a rather invasive brain tumor, um, it was just you know not not nice for her to be stuck stuck in this particular body in this way. And so we we sent lots of energy for it to help her go, and um, and and she did eventually go with me holding her hand, which is great. But I, but the thing is, I was holding her hand and I fell asleep, <laughs> and so in the, the, the point that I fell asleep, I suddenly woke up and she wasn't there. And I thought, oh, ah. so, <laughs> So anyway, it's meant to be. It, 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 these these are the things that we yeah. resist, and we often, you know, even when we're talking about this, I'm sure it brings up certain emotions for people. We talk about death and people dying. We just we we tend to view it as a very negative thing, don't we? When really, it's the most inevitable thing that we're all going to experience, but we do see it so negatively. Do you think that's going to to change? where we maybe celebrate the process, celebrate it more, see it as uh, a transition mm. into something or a graduation mm. into something else. Mm. When we start to ascend the frequencies more, we'll start to become more capable of, of understanding more because our, our communicative bandwidth will increase. <clears throat> and when that happens, we'll realize it's not a problem. We'll also start to realize that the fear of dying is not because of our soul fearing dying, because the soul perpetuates the the, the, the smaller aspect of our high, higher self or or God who over soul perpetuates, of course. The, the body is just a, a you know a, like a, a temporary vehicle, a higher car. We our 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 soul creates this this, this temporary personality, this ego that wants to stay in existence. Now it never it's never lost, even when the body demises, that 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 function of that personality, this ego is created, is absorbed into the overall personality and becomes like a moment's thought. Yes. You know, and I'm glad you said that like because that. Dolores said exactly the same things in her works. Yeah. That's where essentially we keep the personality because I think that's where we're so terrified. I think that's really spot on. That's where this great fear comes from. We're going to lose this sense of self, this personality, this, you know, our sense of humor or whatever it is that we've, we've come to love about an individual. We feel that mm. that will all be lost. Um, and this soul part yes. that we probably don't even understand of an individual, that mm. is the only thing that's going to remain. But I'm glad you've said it like that because I think it's going to offer – huge comfort for people when they hear that is that it does get reemerged or, you know, reabsorbed, as you say, into mm. a greater aspect. We, we, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's not that we lose ourselves in this vast volume of sentience and energy. It's that we become it. Mm. So we don't, we're not a drop of water going into the ocean and losing the drop. The drop becomes the ocean. Yeah. And so, we be, as we depart the body we start to become more connected into who and what we are and we start to remember all the other things we've done the other incarnations the other things we've done the rest of the multiverse our experiences our evolution we start to be able to connect with the multiverse more you know it's like it's like we could become like mega expansive basically mm -hmm. so we this at this point of moving onwards we become what we really are, not this minute, microscopically, not even atom, you know, sort of subatomic version of ourselves. Mm. We become the well, bigger, I like the way it's often articulated. You know, it's an individual point of attention. You know, we're focused on this conversation now. We're seeing each other on, on camera here. Uh, that is where our attention and focus. And then, what we're probably not noticing is the room around us, the street around us, the neighborhood. This it's all still there, but our focus mm. and attention is 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 not on it, and it, mm. it's you know narrowly pointed into this experience. And that is exactly what right. this human experience is about: is a a focusing yeah. of attention. 
and therefore what we're not focusing on no longer becomes part of our background <laughs> yeah no but not, no longer part of our backdrop it's still there because other people maintain it but our focus is not on it because we're here I've, I've always thought that every time I'm in, a, I'm in a different country where i this home doesn't exist except in the minds of other people wanting it to exist yeah and <laughs> i heard this again and i've heard this said before if a tree falls down in a forest and there's not an eardrum there to perceive the sound it makes no sound because it needs an eardrum to have the vibration and the it's resonance clear. and yeah. all of that yeah. for it to be heard if there is no one around mm. if there's no ear to perceive it is yeah. not heard these That's are concepts right. that we find kind of when we articulate in certain ways That's why i love analogies um it makes sense of a lot of this stuff because we just you know yeah. often don't understand how exactly. it all yeah Works. I mean, the, the, the thing is that there would be a vibration, obviously, there because I mean, the animals would have heard it, and the, the plants around it would have heard, would have felt, the, would have felt the vibration of it falling over. Yeah. but it's just that. But in the essence, audible no sound, sound, the exactly the audible sound is created by the eardrum. Yeah, exactly, and everything obviously is vibration. Everything is energy, and I, I think that's one of my favorite sayings of Dolores Cannon: "Everything is energy." Um, I like you mm. go into that in great depth in your, uh, in, in your works and your books, uh, about that. And mm. even science itself does too, doesn't it? Because I mean, you would ask uh, any scientist if, if, you know, things are energy, they would largely agree with that concept. Mm. Mm. Well, that's right. It's, it, then there's different levels of energy depending upon the frequency they're associated with or within which, which of a particular, um, full dimension they're associated with and the structure beyond the multiverse which is the, also part of our creator and beyond that um but the the most the most important thing within all of this stuff is that structure just provides the basis for sentience to be created so when you've got structure you have frequency and energy and that's the potential that gives you the potential potential for these energies to naturally group together and then start to actively group together and then start to seek out and then start to intelligently seek out and then you go down the road to sentience which, which eventually leads to sentience and that sentience eventually can detach from the energy that gave gave it birth so sentience is the is, is the essence of what we are but it's born from the basis of structure and, and the subsequent frequency and, and energy associated with it and the part of us that never dies that goes on it's a sentience and when we realize <clears throat> that this whole idea of death i'm sure is uh <laughs> always comical i'm sure it's... when most people have will go through the death experience it's kind of the the first realization is oh my gosh i feared that for what <laughs> you know we just yeah exactly that's that's that that is the exact response that, yeah that, that most How, of us... and particularly if you've had fear your whole life around death process i mean what 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 a lesson you get in that final moment when you realize i'm still here i'm still yeah, conscious exactly. i'm oh but it's expanded there's so much mm. more and i didn't lose anything going through mm. it there I are, I mean, there are to... souls yeah. yeah so 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 there are souls who don't experience that in straight away because they they're sort of atheist and they don't believe anything so they create this nothingness around themselves that we call limbo yeah um, and is that and the astral help. is 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 that the lower astral where i heard a lot of people particularly that are largely well obviously atheists being one group You've got other groups that are maybe largely into negativity. They might be addicts, drug addicts, or alcoholics. And what I've heard so often, and it was in, in Dolores's books, I think she went into detail about this. Uh, she called them disembodied spirits. And basically, when they mm -hmm. when they when they transition, they stay in the lower astral realm, maybe around those areas that they like to hang out in, like a pub or a 
and this mm. is where I guess the whole idea of ghosts come from and haunted mm -hmm. places. And, and they obviously don't always realize that they have died. They have a guardian Correct. angel that is there that is trying to lead them back to the light, but often they don't want to go. They might want to keep mm. drinking, but they find that they can't do it. And so they're incredibly angry and frustrated. And this is where the concept of haunting comes from. Do you, it, it, does that resonate with everything that you um, have? Absolutely. Have, yeah. No. yeah absolutely yeah. i mean souls do get earthbound yeah basically they, 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 yeah they 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 don't have the capability of detaching most of them don't like as you just stated they don't realize that they're dead but they're trying to tell people and there's, there's plenty of films to help educate people on this which is interesting um <clears throat> so they they wander around the earth trying to get people's attention because they they want to interact Eventually, they do have to go. But most people who go into the limbo state go above the earth, and they're just they're just surrounded in like a grey fog or whatever they create around them. Other souls have an expectation based upon their programming, and it could be a, a, relig a religious expectation or other, and they will create a construct around themselves that is relevant that is basically bears out what they expect to see, and again they have to be. <laughs> coerced out of that thought process wow so, so for, uh, uh, i'm glad you said that because i actually even have that as a question in my mind and you've you've maybe tapped into something there yeah. i grew up as a conservative christian and it took me a long time to 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 accept the fact that you know there wasn't a literal hell and jesus wasn't going to meet me on the other side and that but i do have a lot of family members even to this day that still believe it in those very literal terms mm. Mm. So what you're saying then is for them, maybe their experience of death will be what they think it will be meeting Jesus on the other side, going to a literal heaven. Is, is that what someone like that yeah. would experience? They will, they will temporarily experience that until eventually the guide and helpers will <clears throat> put little spanners in the works. So that they start to realize that the construct they got around them doesn't, isn't right. Wow. So and then and then they'll then it'll start then it'll start to dissolve and they'll start to be back in the energies where they where they you know, where they're supposed to be. Wow. And there's no soul I guess behind. I mean, the, eventually all souls go back to their their higher self or their their um yeah. Um, well, what about soul? then if someone were, believed in the concept of a literal hell? And I I'm sure you, I know you will agree that you, you don't believe in such a place. Um, but a lot of people do, and they've been programmed this, and maybe they've believed their whole life that because they've done bad acts or they haven't lived a certain standard of living that they're going to end up there, could it be possible that they would create that reality for themselves? Mm, possible, yeah. It's possible. And, you know, and you, you've only got to see some horror films or horror books to see yeah. what people can create. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, they, they could create it. Um, and it would be literally difficult for them to to exist. But the the guide and helpers, they do they do a lot of work with souls that get stuck in that way, mm -hmm. and so they will be able to they'll they'll they will they will eventually pull out again. They'll start to see errors in the construct around themselves, and then it then starts mm -hmm. to pull apart. Yeah. Well, but in real quick, yeah, in real quick. Mate, sorry to interrupt you. There's an amazing film that just as we're saying that that. I think if it came to mind uh, that sort of dealt with this whole phenomenon. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called um, what dreams may come with Robin Williams in it. And it's oh, a right. lot of, it, it's a great film and it actually shows that whatever we believe we create. And then it's a matter of coming out of that experience, but the, exactly what you've described is, is the way that whole film um, uh, plays mm. out. It's a it, it's a good yeah. film actually for that reason. I love I that when you that. see certain films, um, and and certain mm. films of someone's tapping into the same information or they're getting it because we often see these films. Like I recently saw Avatar the movie, uh, the, the 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 second movie of that, and this concept of you know the, it being a physical avatar and we have any experience. Um, mm. and there's a lot of spiritual concepts that are covered in that film. 
Um, I think film is a great way of helping us understand some of these concepts. And yeah, and the, and the people who create the scripts or the plays or the or, or, or the directors, they <clears throat> they either intuitively know or subconsciously know this is this is an important piece of education for us all. And what way to educate us by doing it in a way we, we find fun or interesting? Mm. Mm. And mm. I even think those those movies like Avatar that I mentioned, I'm thinking of, you know, the Lord of the Rings series and some of those really big franchise movies. Often what you find, even the likes of Harry Potter, the the, the concepts in it or the, the, the there's meaning in it. Um, that people are resonating and that's part of the reason or Star Wars is another mm -hmm. great example or Star Trek. Mm -hmm. The reason that they're so popular is that people highly resonate with the information, even though they think they're mm -hmm. in for fantasy, there's something that resonates with them. That's right. And at the end of the day, if we're educated, we don't reject. It's when we're not educated, we reject. So the the good thing about all this all these different forms of education of, of educating us is that when we do move through the frequencies enough and we start to become mature enough to be able to experience contact commun communion with other, with other incarnate entities, and we start to experience how you know maturity in looking after the planet, and we start to move away from you know selfishly destroying what's around us to perpetuate what we think is our own existence, but that will only be temporary. Then we'll start to see these other, you know, incarnate form factors become more and more, you know, be more, more in our perceptual vision and then, then our physical vision. And because we've been educated as to what the possibility of different body types are and other environments and other concepts, it won't be, it won't be a shock. And it'll be more, we'll be more accepting, accepting of it. And so, therefore, we won't, we won't respond in a negative way. Yeah. Mm. Fascinating stuff. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm conscious of time. I, I hope you'll come back again soon and have yeah. another chat with me because I, I love doing these chats with you. I, I could be here all day, to be honest with you. Because it's certainly... Well, I could be here all week easily. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and I just know how much everyone that's watching this is going to appreciate the information and you can get all your books on Amazon and the history of God on audible. Um, and that, it's a great read and reads. Mm -hmm. And remember, yeah. it's not just, even if you, if it's passing your intellectual faculties, the information is tangible. It's energy there's a vibration yeah. to it you don't even need to understand it in order to get yeah. its meaning and 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 have it impact yeah. your life in huge ways yeah just read if, if it's if, if it's if you don't understand it just read it as a story and then the deeper level of understanding will, 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 will permeate through you well, as I said earlier, I've really benefited from re-listening. And to me, it's just a go-to. I'll put it on because I know energetically it's giving me something. It's, it, I'll close with this. It's like the crop circles, right? I know you probably agree with this. They carry messages, and the symbol of that. And it's by you just seeing it, download something to your consciousness that gives you information. Mm -hmm. I think your books work in the, in a very similar way. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are packaged up in, in the articulation that they are, but there's so much more on the deeper levels that you get when you listen or you physically read these books. Mm -hmm. That's right. And thank you for noticing. And, um, It'll be encouraging for other people to feel it as well. well and some people as, don't feel it quite the way, by the way. Yeah. Well, as I said, it's my great pleasure, and I feel very honoured to be able to have this forum to chat with you, and to also, you know, um, let others know about your your books because I I do believe in them a lot, mm. and I hope I continue to get to do that. Mm. Thank you. 
we we'll, we'll, we're always available to um, help spread the help spread the truth in some way. Good because although what it seems to be a big subject from from our perspective, what I know is <laughs> he's he's he, microscopically small, but he's still useful. <laughs>